I'm too young to die, you know? These pictures show 49-year-old Frank Locastro in the intensive care unit at New York Presbyterian Hospital. Lung disease left him unable to breathe on his own. Frank needed a double lung transplant. I felt like I was like a, you know, being buried alive at one point. I mean, it was that bad, you know, just sitting there and you know, not being able to move. Waiting for a donor and a match would turn out to be a lengthy and painful process. For nearly two months, Frank connected to a feeding tube was unable to speak. It was tough. It was really tough. Just about this time, Frank met Joel Burning, a chaplain assigned to the ICU at New York Presbyterian Hospital. He's an interfaith, non-denominational pastor. Right after he received his Master of Divinity degree from the Union Theological Seminary, he began his work here. He quickly discovered many of his patients could not speak but desperately wanted to communicate. They're looking right at you and you can see that they're distressed or, or something. They're, just, they're alive. And it was very frustrating not to be able to kind of use this pastoral care that I was taught to provide, not be able to like use the skills I had to be able to help people because they can talk. Chaplain Burning developed an innovative way to reach these patients. He created this spiritual care board. Patients who can't speak can point or blink to indicate the picture that best describes how they're feeling. If someone tells me that they're afraid, and by tell me I mean they point to afraid or have me point to afraid, I can ask them, what are you afraid of? Now they can't talk and tell me, but I could uh, venture some educated guesses. I can ask, you know, a lot of patients in ICU that are afraid are afraid of being in pain. Other areas of the board allow the patient to communicate if they would like to see a priest or a rabbi or just have their hand held. And if they're afraid of dying, what do you tell them? I can't do anything. I mean, I can't um, take that fear away. I'm not a doctor or somebody who could tell them and reassure them, you know, you're not going to die, don't worry. Um, I, don't, I often don't know that, or even if I do, it's not my role to, that's not my job. If they tell me that they're afraid of dying, I might move to some of the other areas in the board. And those include? Well, one of them asks, uh, it's like a pain scale from zero to ten, so I might ask them how much spiritual pain they're in. The chaplain brought his spiritual care board to Frank. You know, a couple times I was feeling angry. I just point to him to tell him how I was feeling emotionally, spiritually, physically, in every other way. Emotionally, he, he was just there for me as a friend. Researchers decided to study the impact the spiritual care board had on patients. Patients reported a 31% decrease in feelings of anxiety after receiving this spiritual care. Now it's being offered to other hospitals around the country. I feel alive when I'm with people in those situations of, you know, crisis and trying to help and, um, and understand them and connect with them. Frank did finally get that double lung transplant. Now he plans on watching his daughter grow up. These lungs are adapting to my body great. I plan on being around a long time. He credits the chaplain and the spiritual care board with helping him get through it. Every day I kept on saying to myself, you know what, I'm going to get these lungs. I'm going to come for you. I'm going to make it. The fact that just a little human connection can make such a big difference.